Hi, Jason Lamro with Coldwell Banker Commercial. If you missed the 2021 Real Estate Symposium, we recorded all of the sessions. This session, an update on commercial real estate and the housing market, includes Bob Basin, Jared Chindell, and Terry Sines with Coldwell Banker Commercial, and Chris Lamoureux with Coldwell Banker Home Source. I hope you enjoy. We're going to go ahead and move into our next segment, which is the state of high desert real estate, commercial, and housing. Uh, we've got a great lineup today, including Jared Chindell, Vice President of Coldwell Banker Commercial, uh, Terry Sines, a sales associate with Coldwell Banker Commercial, and Bob Basin, Executive Vice President, Coldwell Banker Commercial. We also have Chris Lamro, President and Owner of Coldwell Banker Home Source, and I will also be covering different segments in the commercial real estate. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'll uh, go ahead and share my screen. So an interesting year, 2020. We're going to do a 2020 review, and we could make this up. If Steven Spielberg actually went to Hollywood in 2019 and said he had a script, which inclu included a pandemic, fires, riots, mudslides, tornadoes, um, a recession, oh, and a pandemic, they would say it's absolutely ridiculous. It can never make a movie, cut 10 things out and go make a movie. Well, that's what we experienced in 2020. I actually look back, I was putting this uh, presentation together and I was surprised at everything that we've encountered. And when you look at the stats in the high desert and how we did, we fared very well considering everything that was thrown to us in 2020. So this is an overview of the activity in 2020 of the various sectors, office, industrial, retail, multifamily and land. What's interesting is this is the first resurgence that we've seen in land in 10 years where it's actually outperformed the other sectors. If you actually look at the pie graph, 47% of our transactions last year were land. And as you'll see in a little bit, we did have a reduction in the other sectors. However, considering what happened, the stats are pretty good. So let's go ahead and dive a little deeper into this. This is sales volume by city of the five municipalities up in the high desert and also the rural area. The blue area on the bar graphs you will see represents land transactions, which really dominated most of the municipalities and especially the San Bernardino County rural areas. Uh, Atalanto experienced an increase in industrial uh, activity and sales. Uh, well, the second was uh, after industrial for commercial properties was retail. Interesting in 2020. This is a 20 year view of activity. If you've ever seen one of my presentations, I update this graph about every three months. And obviously to the left, we have what was the big boom of the mid 2000s and then the subsequent great recession, that huge U in the middle. What's interesting is we've had a nice gradual recovery. If you look from 2014, 15 and on, it's been very gradual, which has been a conservative economy, but a healthy economy. 2018 was very strong along with 2019. And then what you saw on the right of the graph, you see 2020, you saw a steep decline in overall transactions. However, if you look back, the blue area represents land. It's the highest activity in the first time in over a decade that it's actually outperformed the other categories. So let's dive in a little bit deeper. Commercial sales, which includes multifamily, industrial, retail, and uh, office, uh, total sales volume of a little under $200 million, down 58% from 2019, representing 283 transactions. The transaction volume was down 40%. However, land at 187 million for the year was up 78.5% year over year with 1,461 transactions up 40%. Overall, when you combine commercial real estate with land, we were down 33.2% in the region. However, our transaction count was up one-tenth of a percent, actually two more transactions in 2020 than we actually did in 2019. So with that, let's go ahead and dive a little deeper. We're gonna go into the multifamily. I'd like to introduce Jared Chindell, Vice President, Coldwell Banker Commercial. Jared, how are you doing today? Looks like he's pulling up his presentation. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited and happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, good, dive in. Let's uh, hear how multifamily did in 2020. Multifamily, uh, similar to the markets as Jason said, kind of took a little bit of a hit, but we do want to look at an overview of what happened and what did sell. So these are raw averages, not medians averages. As you can see, cap rate about 6% on average, uh, just under 92 a door, average sell price about 1.5 million. 
uh, the most interesting thing to me is that 100 percent so 100 percent of the properties that closed escrow in 2020 were fully leased so you heard all this stuff about oh tenants aren't paying you know they're paying their rent informal surveys that we did 88 percent of tenants were still paying their rent and everything that closed about 100 percent of them so not too bad uh, that 5.3 percent number that you see that's red uh, that's the actual asking price versus what it's sold for so 5.3 very healthy. That, that's pretty typical. That's what we saw in 2018, 2019. Uh, nothing really significant there. So we wanted to kind of dig in a little bit deeper uh, to the city level, each individual city. And as you can tell, each individual city really struggled with their sales volume. So sales volume went down pretty significantly, especially when you compare it to 2018, 2019. Uh, Adelanto, I just want to point out real quick at 2.1 million, just wasn't a lot of inventory available. A lot of the owners decided to hold on. Uh, especially as COVID hit, didn't put things up for sale. We're kind of holding on to it. But the main thing to look at here is price per unit, price per square foot, and each city went up and it continues to go up. So overall market looks pretty strong. Uh, 2021, already in the first quarter, we're seeing that continue. So generally pretty good. Um, I also put down at the very bottom down there our, our desert neighbors, just so we have something to compare it to. Uh, they're following the same trend, price per square foot, uh, way up. Of the units that sold, you can kind of get a breakdown of what the unit mix was. 22% three bedrooms, 40% two bedrooms, 10% one bedrooms, 27% studios. So the interesting thing here is for the first time, 37% of the units were studios and one bedrooms. Uh, if you would have looked at the data five years ago, it would have been primarily all two bedrooms and three bedrooms. So investors are getting more comfortable with the smaller units and you can see that in the price per square foot prices that people are paying. Also the rent per square foot numbers are up as well. You're getting more rent for your studios in one bedroom in 2020, 2021 uh, than you were even a year ago. This is a sales price distribution. So as you can see, most of the properties that sold were under a million dollars. You had a little bit there of uh, just over 15% above 3.2 million. That was a handful of properties. Obviously the, the largest one being 6.1 million, which was a 60 unit in Victorville that we'll discuss a little bit more in depth later. And the main reason for this is if you had half a million dollars and you wanted to invest it, uh, you could have leveraged up to about a $2 million property. Uh, once COVID hit, you know, Q2, all the lending kind of tightened up. Everybody took a wait and see approach. 50% uh, LTVs were very common with reserve accounts. Uh, some lenders we went as far as wanting to hold reserve accounts at their own banks. Uh, so investors got a little bit uh, more just careful about what was happening. They, they shifted that into lower LTVs and on the lending that they could get. This is a cap rate distribution. So as you can tell, we're still in the six to 7% range. That's where we've been for the last three years. Not much has changed in cap rate compression overall. Uh, there is some five and six, but the majority of them are six and seven. Uh, so if you're an owner and you're looking at uh, simply just waiting for cap rate compression to raise your, your prices on your properties, uh, it's really not gonna happen. Uh, it's just gonna stay about the same. Interest rates are starting to rise. So you're not gonna see very much more cap rate compression on your average style unit. Uh, some of the top end turnkey units, you, you might, uh, we're definitely seeing that kind of play out. Some are, some aren't, depending on the area and the region. Uh, but again, six to seven percent is about where we're going to be. You saw the average was six, um, and we're pretty much going to stay there. That's what it looks like going forward into 2021. And this is kind of where we shift from what happened in 2020 to what happened uh, trend lines and what we kind of foresee going on. So you can see here uh, basically just a steady decline in, in vacancy rates uh, for apartments. And I wanted to point out 2018, 2019, it's about 5%. It's actually kind of inaccurate. Uh, rents were booming during that time frame. Uh, I was really closer to 3% if you took out the properties that sold, that investors got rid of the tenants and then jacked the rents up. So there's, there's a little bit of an anomaly there. It's been a pretty healthy 3% for the last three years. And then COVID, it dipped down below 2. 2020, we had 1.8 at one point in time. Uh, but we're going to see that start to kind of go back up to a healthy margin. You already kind of see it heading around three. We don't think it's going to go any higher. 3% does take into account new units that uh, may be coming online. Different cities have different projects that they've already piped. Uh, and we're going to see absorption for those units, and it's still going to be healthy at 3%. So anytime you have that level of vacancy for long periods of time, your rents are going to go up, right? There's only so many units. Rents are going to go up. Simple supply and demand. Uh, this is a graph that looks kind of like a stock market chart, up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, I wanted to point out one thing, which is right at the beginning of 2020, you can see that rents kind of flatlined. 
And that wasn't a market thing. That was the introduction of statewide rent control. Uh, a lot of a lot of confusion on what was going to happen. Owners weren't sure what to do. Uh, there were claims that there were fines if you jacked rents up before. So there was a lot of confusion that led to that. Uh, but we want to focus more on the forecast. So the forecast were up to 10%. That's the absolute max that you can raise rents in California now. Um, certain criteria apply to that, but uh, the absolute max. And we think we're going to hit it, especially in the next year or so. There's not enough inventory, um, and you're going you're gonna to get there. And this is the opportunity for owners that have properties to raise rents and increase the price of your property. It's not going to be cap rate compression. It's going to be going through rents. So we move on next to some notable sales. Uh, we'll make this quick, but this is my favorite thing to talk about, uh, the actual real estate. So what you have here is a 38 unit that actually opened escrow at the end of February and ended closing in April. So right in the heart of COVID. And what you have is a building that was a value add play, multiple mixtures, multiple vacancies, a solid investment for the owner. Adelanto, we're not gonna spend much time on this just because again, 2.1 million in sales, there wasn't a lot there. Uh, this at the time though, blew away the comps, 93 Adore was the only thing out there. We since have had some that closed out the end of the year, but this was really the first one that set it up or around 90 Adore. Uh, this was a 13 unit in Barstow, absolute pride and joy, two bedroom, two bath, sold for 1.1 to a cash 1031 investor. Uh, very happy with it. Um, it did set the comp for the region, but that building is unlike most of the buildings in the region, uh, built in the 80s. Uh, very clean and has a large military uh, tenant base. This is a 10 unit in Hesperia. This one actually had multiple offers on it. Uh, the reason that they picked this one is the seller was on a 1031 exchange, picked 1.4, all cash, closed at the seller's discretion because um, he was doing his uh, 1031 exchange on, on another asset. And last but not least, I promise you we talk about it, that 60 unit uh, complex in Victorville sold for 6.1. Again, this one also sold in the middle of COVID. Actually got private financing, which was cheaper than what banks were offering at the time. And they have a capital improvement plan in place. They'll look for long-term financing and uh, hopefully get that back online, get some long-term financing and increase their overall returns. Um, and with that, I just wanna say, if you have any questions, any concerns, uh, feel free to get in contact with us. Email Jason, and, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Jared, thank you very much. Great information. And like Jared said, if you have any questions, if you'd like copies of the slides that he just presented, contact our office. Uh, there will be contact information at the end or at cbcinland.com, and we can get you the information or call Jared directly. I'd like to dive into the office, get a little deep dive into the office market for 2020 and what's coming on in 2021. I'd like to introduce Terry Sines, sales associate with Coldwell Banker Commercial. Good morning, Terry. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well, Jason. How are you? Great, great. I'm looking forward to your presentation. Well, thank you. I always look forward to doing this update every year. So we got a lot of information. So buckle up and get ready for a wild ride. So we're going to start first with an overview. Um, so in 2020, our vacancy rate declined uh, to 4.4%, uh, 4 which equates to about 217,000 square feet. The asking rate increased up to $1.68 a square foot, and our net absorption for the high desert was 14.5 thousand. So we're going to look at uh, the square foot by the city. So the office market sector has a total net rentable area of about four point, excuse me, 5.4 million square feet. That's about 857 buildings. So of that market, Victorville has 45% of the market, Town of Apple Valley 23, Hesperia 17, Barstool, um, Barstool 11, and Atalanto 3. So most of this office stock is B and C buildings. These are a large portion that's occupied by the private sector. Most of the premium A class buildings were delivered over 10 years ago between 2004 and 2005, and those were constructed by local government. Um, and public agencies. So let's look at over a 10 year period ending in 2020, there was 186,000 square feet of office space that was constructed. But if you look at the last four years ending in 2020, 
we only had a mere 1,931 square feet delivered and no new deliveries in 2020. Now, the Kaiser Permanente uh, did start construction on their three-story medical building, 54,000 square feet, and it is scheduled to open this year. But where does that leave us with uh, office space and now the pandemic moving towards remote working? So pre-pandemic, only about 20% of people worked from home. Post -pan uh, during the pandemic, 71% are working from home. And the Pew also, uh, studies also did another study, Pew Research, and they showed that of the people working from home now, 54% of those people wanna stay working from home. Then there was another study done by a different group and they said working from home is not a passing trend as evidenced by the big tech companies, Facebook, Google, Twitter, and more that are allowing their employees to stay at home. In the high desert, we are seeing, we are following that national trend of working from home, but is it going to stay that way after the pandemic? Is it going to be a mix? We still don't know how that's going to shake out. So in general, um, our office space is in older buildings. They're either functionally or geographically obsolete. They're limited in the desired corridors. Um, I can't tell you the number of times I found perfect uh, amount of office space for a client, but the building is a two-story that's stair access only. It's, it's, it just doesn't work for a lot of uh, clients. So, you know, I'd love to get some more modern buildings going here. So let's look at our vacancy rate though. In the end of 2020, the vacancy rate was 4% and the vacancy rates have been dropping since 2017. And that 4% is equivalent to about 217,000 square feet. Now, Victorville's vacancy rate is the highest at 5.4% and Barstow's the lowest at 0.2%. And most of the vacancy is well distributed among the office stock. And for the most part, most buildings have a low vacancy rate. Most of the office tenants we have found have continued to pay their rent during the pandemic, though they're not occupying the space as intensely. And many of the smaller tenants are you know, still occupying their space, but now they're starting to explore how that is going to look post pandemic. Because again, we don't know exactly what, um, what inventory is going to be needed if you're working from home, partly if you're working in the office partly. So that still remains to be seen. Now our asking rate, as you can see on the other side, it has increased since 2019. It's up to $1.68 a square foot. Now the rents in all the cities have increased except for Atalanto. Now this increase has been driven by a modest increase in demand in office space plus the low vacancy rate and the lack of new uh, space coming online. So it's, it's just kind of, I always kind of look at it as one of those perfect storms. So now let's look at the absorption. So um, if you look at 2009 to 2019, you can see that the office market has been relatively uh, stable. The effective rents though are still well below the level required. Uh, to support the development of speculative office space where there's little to none that's already pre-leased. So if you look at 2020 though, now you look at the green line, that's the vacancy rate. So that has come down dramatically. And we said that there's been a modest increase in demand, the low vacancy rate, and then on top of that, no new deliveries. And you can see where then the asking rate has skyrocketed up between 2019 and 2020 up to $1.68 a square foot. Um, and then now we're gonna talk about absorption. <laughs> During the last four years ending in 2020, the high desert experienced about 46% reduction in net absorption, going from 157,000 square feet down to 85,000 square feet. And in 2020, we only absorbed 14,500 square feet. Now the leasing activity also declined in 2019, it was about 123 square feet. And in 2020, it went down to 112 square feet. Only Victorville and Hesperia actually had positive absorption. The rest of the cities all, all decreased just a little bit. Now the pandemic was likely one of the primary causes of the low absorption 
uh, rate as some businesses kind of adopted that wait and see attitude regarding the effects on their businesses. And there's also an indication that a limited supply of office space also curtailed some absorption. And the other thing, and I've seen this, is there's a partial shift of people needing office space, but they're going into retail centers instead of going into your freestanding office buildings. So let's look at sales now. Sales from 2019 to 2020 dropped about half. So in 2020, the sales were, there were, um, excuse me, 2019, there were 20 sales at 27.6 million. In 2019, though, 11 sales at 12.5 million. And this could partially be due to the pandemic, which what created this degree of uncertainty of building values and the rent levels. The average sale price in 2019 was 1.4 million, but in 2020, it was 1.1 million. So the median building that sold in 2020 was 5,650 square feet. Median sales price was 925,000. Median price per square foot was about $143 a square foot. Now the cap range went between 5.98% up to 6.6%. But the median price range in 2019 was 6.75, and it dropped 46 basis points in 2020 to 6.29. And this could be because of the decline in mortgage interest rates that was engineered by the Federal Reserve to counteract the economic effects of the pandemic. Um, so let's look at our largest sale, which is on the screen. Now, this sold in January of 2020. It's a former Alaska Federal Credit Union building. It was purchased for medical use. Uh, it was, tw it, well, it is 22,000 plus square feet. So for $3.5 million, $158 a square foot. The second largest sale, I have no idea who that Coldwell Banker home source is, but that building sold in December of 2020. The end user is going to occupy about 55% of the building. It's a multi-tenant building, 21,000 plus of square feet. It was, it's in Victorville, 3.3 million at $157 a square foot. And then our third largest sale, this sold in August of 2020. It's a multi-tenant building, 11.5 thousand square feet in Victorville, 1.5 million at $100 a square foot. So I hope you all were taking notes because now comes the quiz. Let's look at the rundown. So despite the pandemic, the office market did tighten in the high desert. The vacancy rates came down to 4%. The asking rates though went up 13.5% up to $1.65 a square foot. We did have positive absorption of 14.5 thousand, but no new deliveries. The office tenant delinquency rate was less than 3%. Now, the shift to work at home does have the office market sector a little concerned. However, you know what I forgot to tell you guys about was there was also another study that was done by Stanford. And in this study, a quarter of the participants, 27%, decided that they want to um, stay they want to work from home, but a third of those still want to go into the office. So you're still going to have a mix that's going on in that. So there's new construction, the Kaiser Permanente office building, 54,000, which is scheduled to open this year. And then we have our lease rates, which are still below the level to get new construction. And we need some new, more modern buildings. So we'll just have to wait and see how that shakes out. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'm going to return us back to our fearless leader, Jake. Right. Terry, thank <laughs> you very much. Great information. Again, these slides are available. You can visit cbcinland.com. You can also call Terry with any questions that you may have. Incredible information, deep dive. I appreciate it. So let's go ahead and move into the industrial sector. I'd like to introduce Bob Basin, Executive Vice President, Coldwell Banker Commercial. Bob, how are you doing today? Great, right, Jason, and uh, really uh, excited to be here today and uh, share this information. Let me get set up here. Um, obviously, the question always is, how uh, did COVID affect uh, the different markets? And uh, the COVID uh, pandemic here in the, uh, as related to here in the high desert, everybody thought it was gonna be devastating to our economy, but really there was no noticeable effect uh, on our industrial market. In fact, there was some great news uh, in 2020, and it's starting to look like there may have been a, a shift demand in uh, big box users uh, in 
the beginning of 2020, there was no real evidence that there was uh, uh, in a great number of uh, uh, these larger big box tenants that were interested uh, in moving up here into the Victor Valley, the high desert. But in summertime, uh, there, it, it appeared there were some large tenants and users that demonstrated uh, some strong interest in establishing operations here in the high desert. And the result of that, uh, currently uh, in the city of Hesperia, they have a, uh, a development called uh, the Hesperia Commerce Center 1, which is just west of the uh, Interstate 15. You can see it uh, as you're going south on the 15. They are currently grading for the first of three buildings, uh, large format buildings, each building uh, in the neighborhood of a million square feet. What's really exciting is all three of those buildings are pre-leased. The names of the tenants haven't been released yet. That's not unusual. U.S. Cold Storage is proposing a 500,000 square foot distribution facility in Hesperia. And Pixar, which is a third party logistic company, is planning to build 450,000 square feet of distribution just south of the old Heilig Myers building, which again is just west of the 15. If you assume that this trend continues, Obviously, we've greatly increased the industrial development here in Victor Valley. And what's really exciting about that is the number of jobs that will be increased. These projects alone could create upwards of 4,000 direct and indirect jobs. So that's the exciting stuff that looks like it's coming up. Let's look at 2020. Vacancy rates in 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic, dropped to 4.2%, which was the lowest in a decade in approaching historic lows. Lease rates, 68 cents a square foot, which was a drop, which is kind of an anomaly, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in our uh, presentation. We absorbed 305,000 square feet of uh, space. Uh, and that, that was down from 1.7 million uh, in 2019. That pretty much reflects supply limitations. Uh, there was only two buildings completed in, uh, 2000, in 2009, 2020 uh, for a total of 95,000 square feet. Both those buildings were in the Adelanto and in their cannabis uh, zone, cannabis cultivation zone. So the mix of the, our industrial uh, per city, you can see that Victorville has the lion's share of our industrial with 39%. Adelanto, Apple Valley, and Hesperia, very close. Adelanto, 19%. Barstow, I'm sorry, Apple Valley and Hesperia at 18%. And Barstow has 5% at just, just under 1.2 million. And then we have 117,000 uh, in the rural areas. Vacancy rates and asking rates per city. You can see vacancy rate in Adelanto, just over 8%. Apple Valley sub 2%, Barstow sub 2%, Hesperia at two, Victorville around five, the rural areas at two, and again, overall high desert 4.2%. The asking rates per square foot go from as a high of uh, about $1.30 a square foot on average in uh, Adelanto to a low of about 50 cents a foot in Victorville. Um, although that's a little misleading. I mean, we recently leased, leased a small format uh, building in Victorville for right around 80 cents a square feet, square foot. Property mix per square foot. You can see the lion's share again of our inventory is over 50,000 square feet, uh, over 11 million square feet. The 10,000 to 20,000 and 20,000 to 50,000, very close both with 3.3, 3.4 million square feet and are under 10,000 square feet, which uh, we are in dire need of uh, is just under 3 million square feet. Okay, so here we have a 20 year graph and I'm kind of highlighting the, uh, um, the vacancy rate. You can see in 2008 up here, obviously the start of our great recession, we had a, a dive. Well, our vacancy rates went uh, way up and then started working down. In 2017, you can see we had another kind of a sharp rise, um, which may seem odd, but what this was is a, um, 
was mainly affected by Adelanto. Adelanto uh, in their, uh, had adopted some new cannabis uh, cultivation zoning. And there was a lot of tenants that were moving out of that area and uh, cannabis tenants moving in. And it took a little bit, little bit to get those cannabis tenants in. But you can see from 2017 to present that the vacancy rates just dropped dramatically. Again, another 20 year uh, graph. I want to concentrate mainly on this uh, uh, right here in 2019, 2020. Uh, you had vacancy rates again dropping drastically from 2017 uh, and your net absorption minimal, but your uh, net deliveries were new deliveries was virtually zero. So the notable trans transactions, we had five buildings in Adelanto, all in the cannabis zone uh, that sold for between 4.8 and $5 million. Uh, that came out to $167 a square foot. Interesting is that right here, they were on the market for looks like three years. They all sold last year. Again, Adelanto, cannabis zone, 20,000 square feet, um, sold for three, 3.5 million. And let me get this out, $173 a foot. Now here's one that can get you scratching your head. Again, Adelanto, cannabis zone, 6,000 square feet, 3.3 million, which comes out to a whopping $550 per square foot. There's a little bit more to it than that. This particular property was turnkey. I mean, it had its licenses, it had all the equipment, it had everything. You just had to walk in and start planting. It also had some additional facilities that were also um, capable of cultivation that were not included in the square foot containers, shipping containers that they used, but quite an interesting sale nonetheless. Apple Valley, 12,500 square foot building sold for 1 point or 1 million 50,000. It was an end user purchase, $84 a square foot. Hesperia, 1.4 million. This was a non-cannabis use, sold for $60 a square foot. Uh, it was a value add building. I mean, they probably had to add another $30, $40 a square foot to get this building up and running for their purposes. This would be another value add property, Adelanto non-cannabis use, $36.15 per square foot, 45,000 square foot, 1.6 million. So in review, vacancy rates declined 22.2% during 2020, ending at 4.2%. The overall ask lease, lease rates decreased in 2020, ending at 68 cents per square foot, but the non-cannabis lease rates increased by 11%. We had 95,000 square feet of new deliveries. That was the two buildings in Adelanto, 305,000 square feet of net, net absorption down from 1.7 million. Our sub 50,000 square foot inventory is pretty much non-existent. Uh, obviously by the discussion we had about what's going on in Hesperia right now, there's significant activity in the high desert for 500,000 square feet plus in distribution facilities. Uh, it's real exciting that uh, there's an Amazon last mile facility opening in the former Walmart, Walmart building uh, in Victorville on Bear Valley Road. And of course, with, uh, with the uh, vacancy rates as low as they are, we expect lease rates are to increase and we expect vacancy rates to remain low. Uh, and with that, I'd like to end. And uh, of course, if we go through this stuff really fast. If there's any questions, anybody wants to dig into this a little deeper, feel free to uh, contact us. Jason, thanks a lot. Bob, thank you very much. Uh, very good information. Um, industrial is definitely on the uh, expansion cycle in the high desert. If you want more information regarding industrial, reach out to Bob, again, cbcinland.com, and these slides will be made available. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into retail. Uh, retail during 2020, surprisingly they did well in the high desert considering everything that was thrown at it. So let's go ahead and get started here. So, Interestingly, uh, out of all the different sectors, retail was the only one that actually had a, uh, a vacancy rate increase 
but very, very small. In fact, it was 10 basis points. At the end of 2019, it was 8.4%. We ended 2020 at 8.5%. So relatively no movement in the vacancy rates during 2020. But what's interesting is, is we had a 10% increase, which I'll talk about in a little bit, in the triple net lease rate, moving from 111 to $1.21 per square foot. And we had 55,000 square feet of positive absorption which is actually amazing considering in 2020, all we heard about in the news was retailers having to close. It was a tough year for retailers, but even still we absorbed space. So let's go ahead and break down. Uh, not much different than prior years. Uh, Victorville uh, has a dominant share of retail, about 42% of the total inventory. Uh, and then with Hesperia and Apple Valley leading, not much expansion uh, during 2020 and new construction. Uh, so the numbers are uh, fairly similar to the prior year. Well, let's dive into the occupancy and also to the price per square foot. As you can see, the vacancy rates in Atalanta are 3.4%. This really lends to the small amount of retail area that they have predominantly on Highway 395 at the Stater Brothers Center, approximately 305,000 square feet. Retail is very tight in Atalanta. And if you tuned in last week, you heard the city manager discuss additional retail space being considered in Atalanta. Looking forward to that. The other cities are relatively low. Anything under 6% is considered a stable market at 6%, I should say, under 6% starts to get to be a tight market. Apple Valley at 5.9, Barstow at 6.1, and Hesperia at 6.6, .6, a relatively healthy retail markets. Uh, Victorville 11.9, that includes the transition of the former Walmart uh, into Amazon's last mile. So we're gonna see that number come down uh, considerably in 2021 as some of the retail space does get absorbed. Uh, overall, again, 8.5% for the desert. And what we're looking forward to in rates uh, is we had a 10% increase. And most of that had to do in Atalanta, again, a small sample of 300,000 square feet, uh, but over $2 per square foot. The other cities range anywhere from Barstow at 97 cents to a period of $1.36. Those are triple net ask rents. Uh, so again, during 2020, we actually saw an increase in rental rates and a fairly stable vacancy rate during 2020. Uh, this is a 15 year history of vacancy versus rental rates. Really, as you can see, about 2013, it was the bottom, uh, and it was fairly stable up through 2020 when we actually had a rental increase. You can see the vacancy rates fell during the recovery and pretty much stabilized over the last couple of years. So let's dive into some notable transactions before we do a wrap up and what we see in 2021. This is a former Ralph's uh, grocery store uh, that actually closed some time back. Uh, the property traded in the mid 2000s, uh, actually late 2000s um, after Ralph's had closed and Cardenas actually moved into the center recently and the property was sold for a little under 10 million at 9.84 million representing $213 a square feet and a 5.85% cap rate. Actually great repositioning for the center. I can tell you approximately seven, eight years earlier, the property sold for approximately 1.8 million, so great add value. Uh, the other notable transaction that we had in Victorville uh, last year was 11,300 square feet on Restaurant Row, uh, the lead anchor, Starbucks, and Cafe Rio. Uh, nine and a half million representing $840 a square foot and a 5.75% cap rate. Uh, this closed escrow right before the pandemic actually uh, sparked up. And shortly thereafter, Cafe Real did uh, exit the building and uh, it's a great location. They should back lease it. Uh, however, uh, a restaurant uh, strip center, $840 a square foot, definitely set a high mark in the high desert. Topaz Marketplace, after being on the market for a couple of years, uh, finally sold for approximately $10.5 million, representing $243 a square foot. It was 100% occupied at the time of sale, representing 8.22 cap rate. However, this is a value add property. The cap rate is high, especially for the quality of the property and the tenant mix. However, Kaiser Permanente was an 8,000 square foot tenant. And as Terry had mentioned, Kaiser Permanente is building a 54,000 square foot building in Hesperia, which they will transition to, thus leaving a vacancy in Topaz Marketplace. Uh, so great property, uh, and I believe they will be able to backfill it in the next year or so. 
So kind of a review uh, review of the retail market last year. Uh, as I said, vacancy rates were fairly stable. We did have an increase in uh, lease rates. Uh, we had 55,000 square feet of positive absorption. Now, if you compare that to 2019, we had 112,000 square feet of new deliveries uh, that actually arrived to the market in 2020. Uh, and we had well over 152,000 square feet of negative absorption in the neighborhood center. Now that's that the power centers like the super Walmarts, the super targets, uh, that's your small neighborhood retail strip centers, eight to 10,000 square feet. They really took the brunt of the vacancies over the last 12 months. So the high desert sustained minimal loss during the pandemic during 2020. Uh, it shows the health of our retail market. Uh, 2021, uh, we believe it'll be stable. We're still um, hopeful that we'll be able to open up and the retailers will be able to go back to 100% here quickly. So with that, I'm gonna talk about land a little bit, which was really the darling of 2020. Uh, the transactions for land exceeded all other categories combined. And it really came down to housing and industrial. So let's take a look at the last 20 years in land. Uh, obviously to the left is the boom cycle of the mid 2000s and in the subsequent recession very slow recovery uh, in land. And we really didn't start to see activity pick up until about 2017, 2018. But you can see the large jump between 2019 and 2020, uh, along with the average transaction. So diving down into the statistics of land, the average price was 128,000. And that's up about $30,000 from the prior year. The minimal sell transaction was $1,000. But interestingly, the largest transaction, which is really one of the largest transactions in the last 15 years, was at $20,500,000 for an industrial fully entitled parcel, which I'll show in a little bit, uh, for a large uh, fulfillment center and logistics center in Hesperia, California. Total sales volume of 180, excuse me, 187 million. And interestingly, the average time on market dropped 60 days. Last year it was 198 days and this year it was 138 days, days on market. Total transactions, 1,461 transactions for last year. As mentioned earlier, we saw transaction volume for land increase 40% and sales volume increase 87%. Interestingly, new housing starts increased 28.5% last year. Scattered single-family uh, single residential lots. These are lots that are vacant, but in current neighborhoods, uh, ready to build, increased 57% year over year. National home builders actually acquired approximately 933 lots last year in 2020 for approximately $35 million in activity. And we've also seen an increased activity in industrial parcels, primarily in Hesperia, California, where we have a tremendous amount of activity either in the planning stage, permit process, or in the environmental stage. So again, home building and industrial has really led the resurgence in land. Uh, with approximately 5 million square feet planned in Hesperia, we expect additional activity in the land market in Hesperia and along that corridor. Uh, again, land activity remains focused on residential and industrial uses. This is a quick graph of the new housing permits. Uh, the blue is 2019, the red bar graph is 2020, and the green, it was year to date through the end of February. So you can see in each of the respective cities, the increase in activity in new home building. Now, interestingly, this represents about 1,280 permits last year. Uh, considering where we were in 2005 and six, yes, we did increase 28.5%, but still a fraction of what we're delivering. 2005, we delivered 6,000 new homes in our valley. So again, this is barely a quarter of the production that we had during the boom cycle, the mid 2000s. So notable transactions, again, I mentioned the 25 and a half acre facility that's fully entitled, that also included additional land for 20 and a half million. 240, excuse me, 284 acres acquired by Brightline West for the uh, high-speed rail that uh, they talked about earlier this morning. Also an 80-acre site for U.S. cold storage, which traded for a little over $10 million, and six acres, which sold Interstate 15 and the Squally off-ramp, which sold for $5.3 million, representing about $20 per square foot and also an additional site acquired by Coparts in Atalanto, 61 acres for $2.9 million. 
This is a quick overview of the national builders uh, and what they purchased last year. Uh, as you see, it's about 933 lots for about $35 million in activity, a little over $37,000 average per lot sale price during 2020. I anticipate this price to go up as the inventory starts to drop. To put it into perspective, a new lot from raw dirt to be fully entitled and delivered costs over twice that. So the home builders are fortunate to be able to uh, take inventory from our last cycle, utilize it until new land has to be developed. So we anticipate prices increasing on uh, subdivisions. So with that, let's go ahead and move into capital markets. Uh, also an active year in 2020. This is cap rates over the last approximately 18 years. And you can see that cap rates fell to really an all time low, uh, fell below 5%. And let me show you some of the transactions that traded uh, here real quick before we get there is just kind of sales volume over the last 15 years, actually last uh, 10 years. Uh, in the middle of the graph, you see a, a tall graph in the end of 2015, which kind of skews this graph. That actually represents Tanger Mall, which sold in Barso, California in 2015. Uh, other than that, you can take a look at the last four bar graphs to the right, which is 2020. You'll notice a steep drop in the third quarter. That's really reflective of the closure in California in mid-March as buyers actually retracted and stopped purchasing. And uh, by the third quarter, they started resuming their activity, which you see the uptick at the, the end of the year in the fourth quarter. So notable transactions, all these supermarket on Bear Valley Road in Hesperia, California, approximately 19,000 square feet traded for 3.7 million, representing $197 a square foot. And it also sold at a 4.25% cap rate, great for a single tenant building. Our first Dutch brothers in the high desert located on Bear Valley Road, Navajo in Apple Valley, California, actually sold for 2.4 million, are $2,900 a square foot, representing a 4.5% cap rate. Uh, very, one, glad to see uh, Dutch Bros back in our, our, in our market, I should say, and also an incredible sell. Uh, tractor supply sold last year, 18,800 square feet, 6.65 million, representing a 5.75% cap rate, $353 per square foot. Uh, it was on the market for approximately three or four months and then finally sold uh, after really buyers returned to the market, which I'll talk to in a little bit. Uh, Wiener Sissel actually represented the lowest cap rate last year for a capital market investment property at 3.92%. A 2300 square, excuse me, a 2100 square foot building for 1.53 million, representing $727 per square foot. Very strong comparable. So capital still far exceeds inventory. It's a seller's market, without a doubt. Buyers have widened their search to tertiary, secondary markets. Uh, Class B, Class C assets, not just your traditional single tenant corporate guarantee. Uh, again, capital exceeds available inventory, which is why we've seen cap rates compress and drop below 5%. Credit tenants, the Class A properties are trading below 4% in the area. And as long as interest rates remain low, we're still gonna see increased activity and also capital looking to move into the real estate sector. Sellers are still reluctant to sell until they have identified an uh, up leg property. Uh, we really saw a standstill in mid 2020, not just because of the pandemic, but also because we had sellers who were one waiting to see where the market was going. And then once the market, they realized it was still moving forward, could not find the up leg. So we had buyers waiting while sellers were reluctant. So really kind of slowed the transaction, which is why we saw a huge drop off in transactional volume last year for commercial real estate. So 2020 versus 2021, uh, all sectors did expand in 2020, amazingly. New housing starts increased. Uh, speculative purchases you know, of land, which we saw in the 90s and the mid 2000s, still minimal transactions in the desert. Most of our transactions are either investment based or end user based. Uh, low interest rates, as I mentioned a minute ago, did fuel our economy, not just in housing, but also in the commercial side of it. The housing industrial led the way and retail and office, considering what happened, really remained stable last year. We fared very well in 2020 compared to other communities in California and our nation. So moving forward in 2021, uh, we uh, anticipate additional interest in large format industrial development in the high desert. 
Uh, as uh, Bob had mentioned earlier, Last Mile Distribution Center set to open in 2021 by Amazon in really the center of the valley, Bear Valley uh, Road in Victorville, California. Uh, new housing starts increased 11%. Uh, we anticipate it could actually go higher as we are still not meeting demand in the housing market, which Chris Lamoureux will talk about in a moment. And multifamily development, delivery of new apartment buildings has actually increased during 2020. We expect 2021 to see increased activity again in the multifamily arena. And uh, retail and office, uh, we're cautiously waiting to see as we reopen and uh, where the vacancy rates will fall. So we, uh, we hope it remains stable. And uh, again, new development is focused primarily on housing, multifamily and the industrial area. So external influences, things to worry about, obviously inflation, uh, most of the economists agree that we're not gonna see increased uh, inflation probably towards until the uh, end of 2021, possibly 2022. Uh, interest rates, we're watching them closely. Obviously, we've seen a slight uptick in the housing market on interest rates. Commercial still has been felt, uh, fairly uh, flat. Uh, most economists predict interest rates not to move until the end of 2021, so we're hopeful for that. And uh, we still have a housing shortage. Uh, we are still not meeting the demand that we have, so we anticipate building to increase. Uh, and of course, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about California fees, regulations, and taxations, always a concern and uh, can influence our economies. So on a side note, uh, we did uh, defeat uh, Proposition 15, which is a split roll tax that was huge for the commercial markets. Um, I don't think it's gone away. Keep your eye open for it. I'm sure they'll bring it back uh, and that could also influence our markets. So cap rates to remain slow in 2021 as capital exceeds inventory, uh, increased activity in land transactions, not just with land and multifamily, but I think other people will be in our market looking for opportunity. Uh, industrial lease rates to increase, especially the small and medium format that's under 50,000 square feet. New housing starts again will increase and the retail and office sector we hope remains stable. So with that, let's go ahead and move into the housing market. I'd like to introduce Chris Lamro, president of Coldwell Banker Home Source. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Excited to talk about the housing market. So let's say overall view here real quickly is that uh, home prices ended strong, borrowing rate still at historically low rates, inventory is extremely tight, and super low days on market, more homes sold than prior year, and strong buyer demand. Let's get it into the numbers specifically. This is a snapshot of December 2020 for California. As you can see, 509,000 homes were sold in 2020. That's three and a half percent higher in number of sales than in 2019, which was unexpected and fantastic. Um, as you can also see that uh, the price, the median price in December hit a record, record high of 717,000. Um, we had 1.3 months of inventory, drastically down from prior December in 2019. And amazingly, only 11 days on market is the median across all of California in December. And a few more stats on December for California's housing market. Um, as you can see that 509 units represents 28% in year over year change in number of sales. That's the largest year over year growth since May of 2009. And not only um, did we have housing increase in uh, uh, our standard price ranges, let's say, but the high end market, surprisingly. So if you can see on this graph here and the far column here is 82% higher sales in the 3 million plus category. So incredible. The California market in review quickly is that the median sales price for the entire year of 2020 in California hit a record of 659 thousand that's up 11.3 percent over 2019's 592 thousand median price extremely tight inventory as you can see december active listings fell 47 percent from last december on average home selling in less than 11 days california had 28 percent increase of december year over year the number of houses sold and resort home sales are off the chart the total number of homes sold in 2020 over 2019, for example, in Big Bear was 92% increase and 51% in Lake Arrowhead. In the Inland Empire, median price in December year over 
prior December was up 16.9% and number of sales up 34%. So despite COVID and lack of inventory, the tw in 2020, the number of California home sales were up 3.5% over 2019. I think that's just incredible. So let's dial it down to see what's happening more recently in California. So for February, more than a third of homes sold over asking price. That's a third of homes in the entire state. Taking a look at the snapshot for February for the California housing market, you can see the annualized um, sales will be 462,000. That's up 9.7% year over year and up 15.9% year to date over 2019's year to date. January, February. And the median price in February was 699,000. Yep, down a little bit from the record high of 717, but that's still showing a 20% increase over prior year February. And inventory is up to two per two months, which is incredibly low still because uh, six months is your typical normal market. And just super incredible, the median days on market went down to 10 days in February across the state. Incredible. Uh, so next, I want to talk about a little bit of uh, California again, and then also San Bernardino County. Um, as you can see, the inventory, so number of homes for sale, two months supply in February from 3.6 months last February. And the median number of days fell from 23 days on market a year ago to only 10 days. And same with San Bernardino County. We're experiencing the same two months in February, down from 4.1 months of February last year. Days on market drastically fell from 45 to 15 days. So the story is the same, tight market. <laughs> uh, the median price in sales, also in California and San Bernardino represented here, you can see the year over year price went from 579 to 699 in February, um, year over year. And in February, 2021, in California, the median price per square foot is 338. That's the highest since 2007. Last February, for reference, it was 283 per square foot. And year-to-date sales home um, throughout California were up 15.9% through end of February. In San Bernardino County, home prices also were up from 329,000 to 389,000 February over last year, February and home sales were up 10%. So we sold 10% more in San Bernardino County year over year. Also wanted to note mortgage applications increased 26% last week and that marks the 45th week of growth. So housing market is on fire. Now let's take a look at the 2020 high desert by the numbers. So you can see here that our inventory, uh, this was the, the, you know, of course the uh, 2006, seven and eight, we had over 5,000 homes for sale and we were only selling about 200 a month. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, and then more recently, of course, in 2020, we have uh, you know, incredibly low inventory and we're selling about 300 homes per month with only with less than 300 homes per month in inventory. So supply and demand exercise here. Uh, days on market, you can see, of course, during the, you know, uh, when the market crashed before, um, days on market were extremely high. Now over here on the right-hand side of the graph, you can see our days on market has dropped tremendously and absorption is off the charts. Uh, it's incredible. <laughs> uh, the average price per square foot, you can see historically, of course, uh, they were pretty much close to the same on the average price per square foot, which is the yellow line. Uh, so this was the peak of the market last um, in 06, and it was uh, pretty much at 189 per square foot. And now we're approaching uh, 179 per square foot. And the average sold price is also, this was a snapshot uh, December 2020 at the end, um, nearing the median sales price that we had at the peak of last market. So quick snapshot on December, how High Desert uh, ended the year. We had a median price of 310,000 and 247 homes on the market, extremely low. We sold 350 across the Victor Valley Barstow area and represented a 17% price increase year over year. And the average price per square foot throughout the Victor Valley Barstow area was $169. Uh, 41 days on the market, 
And of course, that's less than one month of inventory that, uh, you know, having 247 on the market and selling 350. In 2007, just for reference, it was 27 months of inventory. Again, six months is your standard normal market. And I broke down here, you can see the average price per square foot in Victor Valley was 172 and in Barstow in December was 134. So now let's take a look at uh, basically where the homes are being sold or the most homes in that price range. And that would be the sweet spot of 250,000 to 400,000. We get the bulk of our um, turnover. We have significantly higher sales now above the 400,000 mark than we did in 2019 though. Same with the, the state and nationwide trends. And this is just a snapshot to kind of show you by city, how many homes were sold uh, in December, Apple Valley being the blue and this, this orange on the right hand side is actually the unincorporated area, whereas the other orange here over here with 58 was Hesperia and up top was Victorville and then Barstow and Adelanto over here in the gray areas. So. Now a quick snapshot for more recent figures in February, we ended, we had 45 days on the market average, inventory still less than a month. The median is finally over the peak of prior top of the market. As you can see here, it's 325,000 compared to 323,000 at the peak of the market of the last market. And our average price per square foot in Victor Valley um, ended at 173 with Barstow at 150. So uh, Victor Valley and Barstow combined came to 171 price per square foot. Prices were 16.5% increase year over year from February 2021 to February 2020. And the number of homes sold last month, 223 and 211 on the market. So that's just incredibly tight market. We'd sell a lot more homes. We can sell any home that you put on the market right now. Um, you can also see the each area that we track as well. Um, keep in mind with only 223 sold, it's a very small sampling. So sometimes, you know, it shows here Spring Valley Lake down 4% in price. That's not really, we probably had only a handful of sales. So um, it's more of an anomaly for that. But this is a snapshot of February. And if you're interested in these, we do um, publish these every month in the daily press and we have them available um, for anyone if you want to contact us. But so the local market review. We had multiple offers are being received, uh, well, then and now still. Offers are well over sales price, extremely low number of days on market, and the number of homes for sale are so limited, as you saw in those graphs. Continued price increases, as Jason mentioned, new homes construction slightly increased, but it's by no means an oversupply like we had um, before the last uh, recession. But some other interesting market conditions. Americans went into the pandemic with strong buying power, record levels of home equity and savings. In fact, 60% of homeowners had over 60% of equity. In 2020, average FICO credit scores hit a record high of 710 nationally and 716 in California. It's great. And then record high lumber rates, of course, are impacting our new home prices and new home building. Uh, lots of laws, of course, occurred in 2020, but I wanted to point out a few um, that affected the housing market. SB uh, 1075, the first right of refusal on foreclosure. Basically, it uh, provides for a 15-day waiting period for investor purchases with either a tenant can give a um, right of purchase or any other owner-occupier or affordable housing. And so that basically will overtake an investor's purchase. So the tenant simply has to match um, the investor's purchase price or others that uh, you know are the owner occupier or affordable housing have to exceed it and then uh, they can close the deal. Prop 19 goes into effect today. Homeowners who are 55 plus or severely disabled or victims of wildfires can transfer the property tax base of their existing home to another home anywhere in California, regardless of price without a property tax increase. Of course, if they buy a higher, a higher home priced um, home, there's going to be an adjustment upward to their tax basis, but you can visit carprop19.org to get a lot more details on that. And then the Landlord Relief Act, where a landlord who has one or more eligible renters can apply to get reimbursed for 80% of each eligible renter's unpaid rent between April 2020 and March 2021, if they agree to waive the remaining 20% of the unpaid rent for that specific time period. 
I thought this was fun, a cool fact. Despite a challenging economy in 2020, applications for new business licenses rose. In California, over 400,000 were filed in 2020, a 21% increase from 2019. So overall, home prices ended strong in 2020 and expect to increase in 2021. Borrowing rates still at historically low rates and only minor increases expected. Supply is extremely tight and buyer demand is strong. Homes are selling at record speed and over asking price. More homes sold in 2020 over prior year and the same is expected for 2021. So yes, it's definitely a seller's market but buyers have good buyer power, buying power due to low interest rates and anticipated price appreciation in 2021. So again, we produce these reports monthly and we're happy to share them. So if you wanna reach out to me or any of our Coldwell Banker Home Source realtors, we're happy to share those stats with you, so. Chris, thank you very much. Great information. Uh, it's going to be available on cbcinland.com and it'll probably be posted to cbhomesource.com also. You can also reach out to Chris if you want the, the slide deck uh, or the housing report, which is produced monthly. Thank you very much. Uh, and that wraps up our 2021 Real Estate Symposium. I want to thank uh, Greta Seidman and also uh, Adrian Scher from Brightline West for attending along with U.S. Congressman Jay Obernolte. And of course, Assemblyman Thurston Smith. Uh, appreciate you coming on today and also our Coldwell Banker team. This would not be possible without the large support team that we have. Also very thankful for Jared Chandel, Bob Basin, and Terry Sines with Coldwell Banker Commercial for participating today along with Chris Lamro. Thank you very much. Also, I'd like to thank our sponsors. A big round of applause for our sponsors for who made this possible. Uh, Armstrong Fairway Insurance, the City of Asperia, City of Victorville, Southern California Logistics Airport, uh, Enterprise Funding, Flagstar Bank, Saddle Rock, Reverse Mortgage, Mortgage Solutions Financial, Caldwell Kennedy and Porter, Desert Valley Hospital and Desert Valley Medical Group, Citizens Business Bank, Coldwell Banker Commercial, Coldwell Banker Home Source, and Touchstone Escrow. Thank you. We could not have done this without you. We look forward to seeing you next year. As I promised, last year is Zoom. Next year, we will be back at the Hilton Garden Inn, March 24th, 2022 at 9 a.m. We've already secured our city manager panel for next year, along with Dr. Chris Thornburg, who will be giving us hopefully a great economic report next year. And we will be releasing our other lineups here shortly. Again, thank you for attending and we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you.